Hello, and welcome to the Death Spell Boost Podcast, the official music podcast of the website Surreal Resolution. I'm your host, Robert, and... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, it looks like I dropped my monster condom for my magnum dong. And with me, I have... I'm Alex. He reminds you, don't try the dentist system at home. And... I'm walking. I just... I'm going some rum ham in this raw juice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the rum ham is so much better in context. I was so happy when Frank finally reunited with the rum ham on that boat with the Guidos. Uh, By the way, speaking uh, of Guidos, did you guys know that Gooba is a derogatory slur for Italians? Really? Suddenly, so, Mario yes. makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, thinking about it, yeah. But yeah, if you can't tell, I may have been binging through some It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia this past week, and I'm now right about Season 7, Episode 5, I believe. I, I'm i in the middle of the episode with Frank and his brother explaining the story of Shi Dynasty. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, it's nice when I have time to watch television. So, um, yeah, Episode 60, and... Before getting into more of the formalities, we have to deliver a bit of a sort of a eulogizing. As you may have heard, uh, unfortunately, this past week was the tragic passing of uh, Malcolm Young, founding member and rhythm guitarist for legendary hard rock titans ACDC. Mm hmm. Or, as a buddy of mine called him, the only rhythm guitarist that mattered. Yeah, without Malcolm Young, we wouldn't have guys like Hetfield and Mustaine and so, so, so many others. I, I have many fond memories of, like, the local rock stations, modern, and even, like, classic, always just bumping, like, ACDC jams every now and then. They're one of those things that's just such, um, like, even if you're not really focusing on them, they're this persistent presence in your life that you don't even really, like, notice until they're, like, gone. And it's like, geez, they are, they lost him. Like, what, what are they going to do going forward, man? Well, uh... I know they got one of their relatives to play rhythm guitar for their last tour, but honestly, with Malcolm Young dead, Brian Johnson pretty much all but retired because he's going deaf, and uh, Phil Rudd spending some time away from the band for uh, reasons, I don't see how how this band could really go forward in any capacity. Yeah, it's like at this point, if they were, they'd kind of just be almost like an ACDC cover band known as ACDC. Kind of like when Under Oath yeah. got to the point where they literally had no original members, except for the part where ACDC was good. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's that whole thing passed by, so now on to the formalities. Gentlemen, how have you been? Well, uh... Been pretty good. Can't complain. I've been playing through um, Pokemon Ultra Moon, and uh, believe me when I tell you, this game is hard. Everybody I've been asking, they say the same thing. This game is harder than the originals, but that makes it all the more rewarding when you beat these OP ass trial captains. So essentially, what you're saying is, and and stop me if you think you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> this is. The Dark Souls of Pokemon games? <laughs> Who do you think you are? A writer for IGN? Maybe I do. Uh, well, maybe if you were, you get paid a lot more, and you get pay me that 60 bucks you owe me. Hey, for the record, Damn. none of us are getting paid. So don't try to pull that shit on me, boy. You still owe me money, though. I owe you nothing. I have receipts, motherfucker. Oh, oh, really? Where, where are these receipts? I, I want you to show them to me in person right now. It's called the Decibel Boost Podcast Backlog on the website. Oh, yeah? Well, you can't prove that because oh, oh, I literally just swallowed the entire backlog. Oh, Mac defense, oh. motherfucker. What? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, but anyway... That whole spiel aside, I'm just preparing for a nice quiet week, working three days, getting paid for five, because holiday and PTO, a nice Thanksgiving dinner, and maybe a trip to Best Buy on Friday morning at about uh, a reasonable hour, 9 a.m., when everybody's gone, back in bed. Heh. 
Oh, I am man. a vulture and I scavenge. Well, good for you. You actually get paid for five. I mean, I had to stay at work until 6.30 today just so I can make up the hours I'm going to miss on one of the days. Fucking bullshit. Well, man. that sounds like a personal problem. But anyway, oh, should have mentioned this as well. My car battery died on Friday morning. Oh, damn. So oh, I had that get, was fun. So I had to get it jumped and taken to Walmart to get a new battery installed. Half my paycheck down the drain. Oh, I know the feeling, man. That's that's gonna be a bitch. Uh, God damn it! This fucking car is ruining me. Every little thing goes wrong with it. Ah, uh, cars are a bitch. World. Yes, indeedy. So, what about you, Mark? Let's see. Um, well, let's see. I ain't got shit in the mother for this week. You know, Thanksgiving coming up and. I will say I would go over to Sean Black Friday, even though even though I get paid this week. Although, although I work Friday, although I work Friday, even though it's like, why, why, why you know, cause myself, why, why would you come to a place, come to a place after like to a restaurant after after Thanksgiving? It's like you you got food at home, or I don't know, maybe you take a turkey, but but fuck, but, but fuck, but fuck, that's all. Well, this. well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Mark. Maybe we're talking about one of those families that, I don't know, seasoned their turkey with fucking flaming hot Cheetos. Uh, oh, oh no, 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 no! Get that oh, white no. trash shit out of oh, here! No, oh, it's no, like all of a sudden, shit. like ta- Taco Bell and like pizza seems like the more sensible option. <laughs> oh. It's like I, I looked at that and I'm like, you know. I want to give credit because at least white people are finally seasoning their turkey, but like God, there's got to be a better way. Like, here's what I would do: I, I would I would take all of Mark's uh, house break-in tools, break into the house, leave just piles of Goya seasoning, cause cause that shit is the fucking goat, and, and finally, and just leave a note that says, "White people, you're welcome." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just man, if you've never uh. used Goya on anything, that shit is like crack. <laughs> anyway, as for me, as I said, nothing apart from the it's always sunny, and also been playing. Uh, finally, took a break from Mario Odyssey and playing one of my game rentals, uh, Odin Spear Leaf Thrass. Yeah, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly. Odin Spear Leaf Razor or something. I I don't know. It's it's made up Germanic language. I don't know. Uh, excuse me, Germanic has a proud and noble history of being butchered by Japanese people in translation. <laughs> ah, I kid, I kid. But I'm having fun with it. Uh, right now I'm on a Queen Mercedes campaign, which... Eh, okay. I, I'm not sure I can get used to the fighting with projectiles. I prefer just oh, smashing Rob, with swords and crap. Rob, I should mention, on my TV right now, there's a Mario Odyssey commercial. Really? On my TV? Yeah. There's a King of the Hill episode. I want this game so badly. <laughs> buy me this game, you... motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, no, see, I offered to buy you a game because of the bet, but no, you weren't having any of that. You, you don't get to turn back now, bitch. <laughs> then pay me! You know that's never happening. Come on. You're, I feel like you're getting too hung up on this. You, you gotta move on, man. I have learned from the best when it comes to monetary conversation. I've learned from Glenn Fricker. If I don't get paid enough... Then I go mix recall on your ass and double the pay. Do you really <laughs> want to owe me one hundred and twenty dollars? Oh, you you can double down. You're still never getting the money. I, I don't even know what you're talking about at this point. See, it's all about plausible deniability, man. I I could just pretend that the money's not there and it's not an issue. Do I have to get a cocaine dealer to come into your house in the middle of the night and beat the money out of you? <laughs> ah, jokes on you. I got cricket. You live in Miami. There's a cocaine dealer every other block. I got more than one cricket. Sure you do. Dude, it's Florida. We're, we are ripe with fucking disgraced priests that get their neck slashed in amateur wrestling matches. Okay, no drinking game for this. People will die. Oh. Uh- yeah, th- this is probably going to be an episode heavy with those references, but um, let's actually uh. move on, because we, we have yeah. stuff to discuss. So, let's actually get into the new song discussion of songs from the past week. As always, there will be a link down in the description, so you can follow along with us, then come back to the episode and listen to our opinions. First off, 
this one is just a standalone track, but it's obviously from an artist I, of course, like. Once again, bringing up health. Now, it's been about a couple years since Death Magic came out, so maybe we're about overdue for a new album, but this ain't it. Instead, they collaborated with the producer of a similar ilk to theirs, a dude named No Life, with the song titled Hard to Be a God. And again, health, knowing what they are, it's this kind of super moody, like, uh, production with a lot of, like, scratchy noise and these weird stuttering bass synths and, like, just very industrial-sounding, contrasted with the, you know, the very moody, somber-ass, reverb-heavy melodies, lots of stuttering hitches and delays. Every time the drums hit, they sound very massive, almost kind of like in that very god flesh esque sense. It's, it's health. It's, it's good for you. It's it's very healthy to have health music in your ears. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> okay. Well, well, this song makes me want to make some health food and maybe bash several dozen eggs against a random table full of food while we're like a Neanderthal. Hey, I got that reference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good beat. Good. Good yeah, vocals. Oh, good, sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Good beat, good vocals. I like the low key synth vibe in the song's groove. It's just, uh, it's good. And in the wars of how to basic, <clears throat> ha! <laughs> oh yeah, oh oh yeah. I definitely dig the song too. I definitely do like the the whole. I like the whole production from the stems, from the vocals. It it it, it, feel, it, feel, it feels like a very low, like a very low key action movie mu- music. Like, you know, you, you know that feeling. And it's funny that you bring that up. Remember, these are the same guys who wrote the music for Max Payne 3. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. Learn something new every day. Mm hmm. But anyway, let's move on to something that's not good. Um, in fact, it's so not good that the album is coming out dead in the middle of December where no one's going to give a shit and bother to put it on any best of the year list. <laughs> uh, Mr. G Easy. Which kind of feels like he only came up with that name because Jeezy was already taken. So, he's got a new album coming out December 15th called The Beautiful and Damned. We have the title track from that album, and I will be kind. I will be kind and say that technically this is the most lyrically competent song I guess I've ever heard from him. As the title implies, it's this typical, you know, oh, I'm battling the angels and the demons inside, man. You know, trying to be... You know, the duality of good versus evil and stardom. And I just broke up with a female on tour. Had to do it by email. That That's an actual line from the song. Oh, boy. And that's like, okay, that sounds douchey regardless of what kind of eternal struggle you got going on, man. Have the decency to talk to her if you're going to break up with her. Do it to her face, you pansy. But, I mean, the beat is about, you know, it, it's trap flavored. That that's it. I literally ran out of things to say about this song. So um, yeah, you know how much how I say I really don't like Jeezy and how I think his music is kind of lame. Yeah, this yeah this proves it. Yeah, this proves it. Like I don't know, like what the hell I'm listening to. This sounds like some w- wannabe trap music. With me with with, with, with this with, with this got my looking motherfucker and whoever fucking singing the hook was like, why do you remind me of Macy Gray? For some reason, I don't know why that the name just popped up to me. I'm like, eh, ugh, this, I do not. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm pretty much. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not fucked with this. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I don't give a shit about this. I'm anyway. Like, I barely even care about this. I barely care about this motherfucker at all. Well, look at the bright side, Mark. By, by the time the album comes out, we're probably going to be balls deep and working on our end of the year list. So you won't have to worry about g Easy up until... Uh, th- th- oh, around the time of the next Fast and Furious movie. Also, <laughs> also uh-huh. you worry about, Ty- you're about yeah. Tyrese. And that's a story for another time. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Now, uh, moving on to our next story. Speaking of rock bands who have lost key members... Uh, Stone Temple Pilots. So, obviously, they've been in a bit of a fluctuation ever since the passing of uh, Scott Weiland. I don't know if anyone else has been filling in on vocals in the meantime between then and now. I'm sure Alex could probably correct me on that. I don't think so. I think they've been kind of... I think they've been kind of quiet under the radar for the past uh, year or so. I haven't heard 
anything from them until recently. And by recently, we mean literally like two or three days ago. Like, uh, yeah. they found a new singer, uh, this dude named Jeff Gutt. Wow, that's that's an unfortunate name. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a character from Office Space. Um, yeah, Jeff Gutt, who was apparently who was apparently a contestant on, I guess, a relatively recent season of X Factor. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they brought him onto a show. They performed. Now he's in the band, and they even recorded a song with the guy called Meadow. It, it's radio rock, and, and yeah. there's so little going on here. That's literally all I had to say. It's it's radio rock. Mm-hmm. Jeff Gutt. Yeah, great name, by the way. <laughs> Not as gruff a presence as Scott Weiland, but he does bring his own presence to this track and the band as a whole. Yeah, the song is solid radio rock, solid chorus, kind of in one ear out the other. Nothing really new to it that sort of reinvents the wheel, but you know, it is what it is. I miss the olden days. Yeah, before Scott Weiland died. Yep. Where the songs gave you more to talk about. But, moving on, and we are going now to the Adult Sub Singles portion of the broadcast. And just as a heads up, we're only talking about two this week, because, yes, I know the College Stetson one dropped this morning, but I did I not get I didn't know until now. Oh, yeah. dude, you didn't see? Like, on, on DeMarco's Twitter I, I, or anything? I, 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 I didn't know this until I told to the site. Like, that's another song? Shit. I didn't even know. I, I'm like, like, well, shit. I, yeah, we'll cover that next week. It's like, dang it, DeMarco. Week. Wednesdays. That's the schedule. Come on, man. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Much love. So, uh, first of these songs is from this rapper dude named G. Perico. Which, Perico? What the hell got a name is that? Is that like cheese or something? Oh, no, wait. I'm thinking of Pecorino Romano, which is a good cheese. Why am I going on a tangent about cheese? Fuck. Anyway, so um, apparently he dropped a different song, like, I guess a while ago, maybe a week or two before. Uh, This guy's got yet another new song out, this one called Late Night. And, you know, I gotta say, I love the beat on this thing, especially, like, the bass. The way the bass hits, it almost kind of reminds me of, like, the production on the most recent Vince Staples album, with just how, like, warbled and, like, direct it was. And the dude's flow, like, Perico, I, I don't know how to say other than he kind of sounds like Danny Brown without the silly voice. Like, he, a similar flow to that, just without, like, the the, the super high-pitched, like, wackiness to it. <laughs> and the lyrics are, you know, your whole thing, like, about sort of police brutality and being paranoid about going out at night, you know, sort of, hence the title, because you're just paranoid someone's gonna, you know, arrest you for existing while black. Which, isn't that, like, just the scariest thing in the world? I mean, heck, it even opens with, yeah. I can't sleep because last time I went to sleep, I woke up to the police with the guns to my head. That That's some imagery right there. It almost kind of reminds me a lot of, like, that Joey yeah. Perp yeah, song much. we got last yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, a, this is a, like, some, this is, like, like some, some, what, this stuff got that, you know, that, 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 West, Co- that West Coast Jeep funk sound. I'm saying that I make my, that make my fucking want to quit walk. Like this is like this is like like production wise, this shit is a this shit is a hot banger. And I, and I, and I gotta say we know we you know with the lyrics, like, yeah, I yeah I do get all that shit. That definitely get all that shit. This is a very this is a very solid. I mean solid solid um banger. And <laughs> and, and like I said, this will make a motherfucker want to want to crip walk. Unless you're a blood, then no, then okay. <laughs> We know that all too well. And now moving on to the other adult sim single. Uh, we got this one being one of the surprise drops that was not scheduled officially. Uh, and this one being yet another uh, ghostly international artist. Not one I'm familiar with, but they are called Heathered Pearls. Um, I don't know how long they've been in the game, at least off the top of my head. But I do know they're dropping a new EP December 8th called Detroit, Michigan, 1997 to 2001. And so we've got one of the four songs from that album, uh, Mac and Bellevue. And, you know, I got to be honest, they can't say I'm feeling this one all that much. Just because you're kind of getting assaulted with, like, it, it almost feels like a sort of a 20-second loop that's just kind of repeating for, like, 
five minutes. It's, yeah, there, there's just yeah, kind of like, like these synths of various saturations and tinges just kind of bleeping and blooping in and out, but there isn't ever like a clear like structural component to it. There's not like a memorable drop or a unique melody. It's just kind of there. I, I mean, I guess it's an EP, so that kind of makes sense. But still, you would expect the ghostly artist to be on their game. Come on, man. We had your boy Dabrier a couple weeks ago. Come on. I want to like this, but every time I turn this, I'm like, eh, I want, I'm trying to get into it, but it's like, it just feels, it just feels like video game menu music. Pretty much, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like you're playing something like I don't know, like Tetris or something. That'd be the music you hear, or at least, or at least that would that would play that would play when you were playing Tetris. I play Tetris. I don't know that. Damn. Yeah, this music is basically like Tetris minus the communism, which is not a version of Tetris I even want to play. Communism forever. Um, Ain't that right, Cas Can? Oh, damn. <laughs> Get in the corner, Rob. That show is banned. Oh, please. Who gives a shit? And he got an album out, too. <laughs> <sighs> oh, yeah. That slipped under the radar. Apparently, Mr. Jaden Smith dropped his debut full length, like, last week. Damn. How, how did uh, I miss that? But Mr. Fantano, someone's calling for you. Nah, I think he's too busy spinning his awesome Hong Kong 97 vinyl. <laughs> Only one of five. Very nice. But anyway, let's move on to, once again, Freddie Gibbs. Again? Yes. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, like last week, he did. Last week, he, he, he got into trouble, he got into trouble with, with, another, with a friend producer. And now, this time, he's with somebody named Lofile. I hope I'm saying it right. With the with this song called "Off Top," and and I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna say this: this is this is trap flavor in the right way. Very a very tropical trap flavor song with Freddie doing his usual usual thing, usual thing, and how and basically and basically him rapping his ass off, and of course you know doing she always does, and 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 yeah, that's all I got. Like this song, this song, this song is. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I like it. I unfortunately do not have much to add beyond that. So, quick little thing. So now let's move on to our last two songs. So, uh, once again, you two, and once again, Kofu Kenny. Hey, <laughs> with yet another song between the two, where it's really more just Kendrick kind of does the intro bit, and then you two takes care of the rest of the song. Uh, with the song American Soul, once again off their December first album, Songs of experience and for this one i want to technically like it better than the last single we got just because this one you know again u2 is one of those arena rock bands so i kind of have a bare minimum standard that it has a pulse and this song is at least trying the tempo is a bit more driving and the actual production gives a lot of you know fuzz on the guitars and a kind of rawness to the drums but even with that there's still something sort of weirdly limp feeling about the performances on this thing like especially during the courses when you expect like those punches of guitars that just kind of feel it, again it's more like getting hit with a wiffle ball bat it's just it's so weird to me oh and if you're wondering about like uh this little thing there are lyrical references in the verses that tag on to basically they're referencing what they did on the song triple x from damn mm-hmm yeah, that thought that was okay. pretty cool. It's a solid track with a bit too focused on a more electronic synthetic groove, but eh, it's okay. And this is gonna be one of those albums I pass up in December because you yeah. you already had two chances and you're losing me, you two. Yeah. I I will say though, okay you two is better than bleh, you two. Mm. I'll take your word for it. I It's just everything I've ever heard from this band singles-wise has never made me want to check out an album, so... 80s U2 was best. Trust me on that. I mean, okay, I like New Year's Day, but... And maybe Sunday, Bloody Sunday, but that's about it. Mm. But now let's move on to our uh, last song this week. Now, um... All right. A little bit of a tangent, but I'm warming up to something here. Have you ever had 
an individual of some kind in like any kind of entertainment industry that you like them, but you've never liked anything they've been involved with. Like, I think Anna Kendrick is a national treasure, but you will never get me to sit through a Pitch Perfect movie again unless you pay me. <laughs> Similarly, uh. Rob Flynn, the frontman of Machine Head, is one of the coolest motherfuckers in all of metal. And especially after him calling out Phil Anselmo, Anselmo from Pantera after that whole white Nash, white power thing, that will eternally earn me his respect and props. I'm probably not going to try and sit through a machine head record anytime soon. Because just the times I've tried to get into this band, they're one of those bands almost like Code Orange, where on paper they are completely my jam, but in practice I just can't. Although... To be fair, I don't hate Machine Head necessarily. It's just... Uh, okay, mm-hmm. so they announced a new album coming out uh, January 26th of next year. It's called Catharsis. I believe it's their ninth full length. And we got the first single, uh, Beyond the Pale. Now, I'm just kind of listening to this thing, and it's got this kind of uh, muddy sort of hammer-on pull-off guitar groove, which, as everyone's pointed out, it I, I'll say I liked it better when it was recorded by Strapping Young Lad. Um, oh uh, yeah, but yeah, it's the drums and everything else is kind of hitting this triplet groove progression. Um, and then like sort of the, there are parts in the song where there's like these dueling guitar leads, but like, it's just kind of sounds so safe and boring to me. It's like everything, the production here sounds all very polished and nice, but you still don't feel like you get like smacked in the face with it or anything, especially during the solo section. Now, this is one of those things where like, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head if that's how they always record and perform songs, i.e. without a proper rhythm guitar, opting for dueling leads, but that solo section desperately needed some rhythm guitar in there. Otherwise, it just feels weirdly empty, like nothing is happening. Okay, well... Let me counter some of those points. First, now you know how I feel about Daniel Lipiscaris. Shut up, Alex. <laughs> Just for that, I'm Second, not paying you the 60 bucks I don't owe you. You will pay me. I will fly down to Miami if I have to, but I'm getting off track. Second, really? Like, The Blackening is one of the best albums ever. Like, It's so heavy. It's so powerful. It's so in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People tell me that about a lot of albums. Doesn't mean I have to listen. Uh, yeah. And as for the whole Devin Townsend thing, yeah. So the story goes, the song rips off in the intro, the main riff of Love, you know, the that riff from, of course, Trapping on a Lad. And that's and an Devin awesome w- fucking song, by the way. Yes, it is. And Devin went on Twitter and just said, Eh, we all borrow and steal riffs from each other. It's no big deal. But yeah, this does sound a lot like guilt love from strapping. While the rest of the song, it just, it just powers through the prototypical machine head riffage. And I will say, the reason why there's no real rhythm section in the lead parts is because they're both lead guitarists. They both play solos. Well, to me, that seems like kind of a mistake, because... You're, you could have the most epic shredding solos in the world, but if you don't have, like, that nice low end, especially with the, the... The bass, with all due respect, even at their best, can only do so much to fill out the low end. You you, you guys need, like, I don't know, maybe you need to get, like, an Iron Maiden or Whitechapel situation going. Yeah, well, or a periphery whatever. situation. Yeah, I was just going to say that. But I, I guess I'll say I'm more complimentary toward this song than you are because it's the typical machine head style that we've come to expect since the blackening, and I dig that a lot. I'm never gonna hear the end of the blackening, aren't I? It's such a good album. It's like one of the best modern metal albums ever. Eh. Personally, it's I up pref- there with City, okay? And Ashes of the Wake. Okay, how fucking dare you, Alex. <laughs> Again, just for that, I'm not paying you the $120 either. You are going to pay me one way or another. Aren't I already paying enough by listening to your bad hot takes? I have listened to yours every week, don't I? Oh, uh, excuse me. My gourmet takes are excellent. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, they're about as flavorful as 
Well, the AMAs. Rice cake. Oh, Actually, I prefer yeah. to think my takes are more like rum ham. <laughs> see, D- see how he does that, that include? Back? Does that include an old syringe by chance? No, but you do have to wash it down with a can of Wolf Cola. <sighs> it is, in fact, the right cola for closure, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that basically closes out the song discussion. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, we got our handful of news topics for the week. So, uh, stick around. And we're back. Uh, this first uh, topic is kind of a really brief one. There's literally only 30 seconds worth of content here. but um, And, of course, it deals with something quite obscure to most of the general public, and that's Taiwanese symphonic black metal. Oh, boy, my favorite. But, thankfully, it doesn't technically have to do with the music itself. So, yes, the uh, cult popular, and I'm using cult very strictly here, uh, Taiwanese metal band Thonic have been uh, apparently trying to break into the film game with an indie uh, action comedy film called Xiong. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly. And only now are we finally getting a little teaser for this thing. As we said, it's literally only about 30 seconds and it's hitting their theaters like on the 29th. Um, what's notable here is that for this teaser, they choose to include a bit of a cameo from none other than a close friend of the band. Lamb of God frontman Randy Blythe. And apparently he's supposed to be performing in English in this entire role. So I guess the whole joke with him in it is going to be, hey, hey, it's this American, he doesn't really understand the language. Hey. Yeah, but still, it's cool to see Randy Blythe in a movie where he's acting like a normal human being with the glasses and the hair tied back and all that other stuff. Yeah, I'm sure it'll probably be its own amusing little thing. Granted, we'll have to see if any bastard's gonna shelve out any amount of money to, like, I guess do a really mediocre dub job and then stick this thing onto, I don't know, fucking Shudder or something. Or CISO, whatever. Whatever the big streaming <laughs> service for indie Taiwanese action comedies featuring metal musicians is. Well, clearly it's Hulu. Netflix isn't gonna pay crap for that. <laughs> oh, that is true. But yeah, it's just a little quick one, so just to get the muscles kind of going. Now let's move on to one of the big ones. Um, and I just got to say, how much of a fucking asshole do you got to be when you get banned from fucking Fox News? I mean, yeah. they'll fucking like, protect sexual predators and people who endorse pedophilic Senate candidates, but they kicked out Gene Simmons, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, oh as the story goes... Let me see uh, if I could find here. Uh, apparently, he took a little visit to, um, you know, Fox News. And according to the Daily Beast, during his presence, he, quote, crudely insulted female Fox staffers and taunted them after making the rounds on Wednesday. Oh, he was promoting a new book. At, oh, dear God, that fucking title. On Power, Ooh. My Journey Through the Corridors of Power and How You Can Get More Power. Did Charlie Kelly come up with this title? <laughs> oh, oh <boy. laughs> Jesus fuck Oh god Yeah And it, it gets worse because apparently He ran in He ran into none other than Mary Elizabeth McGlynn And Well Tried to make a move You don't do that with the major Motherfucker they also report that he ran around the Manhattan offices insulting and taunting female staffers and reportedly saying, Hey chicks, sue me, while pulling open his red velvet shirt to show his chest and stomach. Uh, that, oh. that's, that's disgusting. Oh god. Simmons, oh dear god. And again, this is, we're, we're establishing, this is the same network that will um be perfectly cool with Sean Hannity defending pedophilia. But Gene Simmons is the line, apparently. 
Eight. Yeah. I can only hope one day I will get a live 10 man from Fox News. But that's only because I'm flipping off the entire building in Manhattan for hours on end. Hey boy. Oh, are you going to have it on like a giant poster board or something? Like a picket sign? Just the no, I'm finger? just going to... Oh, actually, that's a good idea. Actually, I might do like what Foamy does and just get a gigantic middle finger costume. That works. Or alternately, you could just sell, like, I don't know, run around with a dick towel and <laughs> write, like, this is a metaphor uh, for Fox News somehow. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, mooning. That always works as well. Yes, that does work. But, yeah, I mean, I suppose that's not the worst thing Gene Simmons will have to worry about this week, considering that, much like literally everyone else everywhere, uh, sexual assault allegations have come out against the man, and... Yeah. Given that this is the same musician who I believe once referred to himself as Dr. Love. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. But at least he never got the American Sign Language symbol for I Love You trademarked because he doesn't know how to do the metal horns like a fucking idiot. Yeah, he he doesn't know how to do that. He he got it confused with Spider-Man, man. Like, were, were you remembering that classic gag from the classic Sam Raimi adaptation? <sighs> but anyway, let's move on to news that's less crazy. Coolio running for vice president. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> Bring it back. Okay, okay, okay. So, it's a ways away from 2020. It's a long, long... God. insufferably long way until 2020 but reportedly <sighs> mr coolio is planning to run a presidential campaign <laughs> with um as the vice president alongside adult film star sherry deville who seeks to become the next u.s president ah. okay i'm unfamiliar with her work i will say now, uh, when Coolio ex- was asked why he's choosing to run in an election that hasn't happened yet, um, he's say- he was quoted as saying, Somebody gotta do something, man. Somebody gotta try. We need normal people. We need normal, regular, everyday people in office. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We're talking about a 90s rapper and a porn star. I, am I missing something here? <laughs> well, I mean, ha- have you seen the neighborhood that you live in? I, I'm telling you, the, the the nice old lady next door that baked you the cookies that one time. She's a uh, she. She's getting some action on the side. And the dude, like Ugh. that, looks like he's about to go to a nice cushy job at the bank. That that motherfucker is actually the next big SoundCloud rapper. Oh my god! Well, I guess nowadays anything's possible, huh? I, I miss when there was <laughs> rules to this kind of thing. Hey, this mm-hmm. is shit. So next, so whatever next VP uh. is gonna be the man who the man who douses hot wing with Blair's making death sauce, <laughs> d- dice all, all all over the shit and passed out like a motherfucker. motherfucker. You don't uh. you <laughs> be careful with your hot sauce, man. You can't be you can't be eating shit that careless. Okay. You're gonna end up all fucked up. Like, there is the rhythm ba- of the ten sauces in that order for a reason. Okay, 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 based on that, I think any possible presidential candidate must do every hot wing in order, leave the bones out there on the table. So what I'm saying is Joe used to be the next president. Oh, absolutely. Everyone would get pink morph suits and Japanese food. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. But uh, that's enough riffing on that subject, which, again, that's kind of a filler one. Because at the end of the day, there was only really one big news story this past week that absolutely <sighs> mattered. And yeah. this is, we might ramble for a bit on this one. A wide range of things, perhaps positive, negative, in between, who knows. So this past week came a rather shocking announcement uh, about five days before now. Um, a post on the official website of the long-running Vans Warped Tour uh, from festival founder and manager Kevin Lyman. Uh, he has announced, Today, with many mixed feelings, I am here to announce that next year will be the final full cross-country run of the Vans Warped Tour. Yes, um, 
this tour after this keep in mind has been going on since 1995 easily the biggest like summer festival thing that happens one of the few probably the only major touring festival of the scope uh is coming to an end in 2018 now there a buddy of mine who believe it or not is actually an employee for vans did raise a point that specifically the wording full cross-country run could leave room to interpret that they might restructure vans warp tour in a different form maybe make it something more manageable like i don't mm-hmm. know like summer slaughter or have it just be a like a weekend thing at one specific location but mm-hmm. um given that um in various interviews following the announcement kevin lyman has said that one of the big reasons for shuttering this thing is because of diminishing ticket sales and everything just not hitting those demographics um yeah if we never hear from this again in this form um i i won't be all that surprised mm-hmm. i mean should be told i am maybe a little bit surprised because i okay i i kind of figured maybe they were having some money troubles but i didn't think it'd be enough to like for them to stop doing this <sighs> well um I will say I could see them restructuring into like a weekend kind of festival in one remote location, kind of like, you know, Bonnaroo or even uh, Coachella. But I, I will say trying to do like a full scale tour in, in different cities throughout an entire season. Yeah, that could be a little bit hard to pull off, especially nowadays when uh, – you know, people don't have that much money anymore. Yeah, so, I mean, it, look, no offense to you personally, Kevin. Well, okay, maybe a little bit of offense, but for other reasons. Yeah, m- money's tight around here for a multitude of reasons. But again, this isn't the time for more political spiel. Mm-hmm. Or maybe there might be a little bit, but okay. So there's obviously a lot of opinions that can be run here. There, There's very much the good, the bad, and the mess. So... Let's, um, the big one is that, okay, say what you will about this, uh, festival. Obviously, people of me and Alex's stature poke fun at this shit all the time. I will say, though, I have actually been here twice. First time I ever went was the summer after my junior year of high school. Uh, I actually went up in New York because I was actually visiting some friends up there at the time. And, you know, it was a pretty fun experience. I mean... I had fun watching, you know, like, August Burns Red, um, Acacia Strain, uh, Big D in the Kids Table, you know, one of the more, uh, underrated ska bands, let's say, of the modern era, and I went the year after that, I know for sure, and that was also a fun year, because I saw shit, like, every time I die, and, like, four years strong, and they gave some, uh, killer performances uh, that day, although, sadly, I don't think there was a Jared Alonji that year. Boo-hoo. And so, you know, say what you will about this festival, but it is still very much an institution in a lot of ways. It's still sort of this rite of passage for a lot of, you know, the teenage fan bases for, you know, when they're just getting into stuff like your anti-flags, your uh, My Chemical Romances, your Of Mice and Men, After the Burial, shit like that. And, you know, that that's an audience that still deserves to be served, even if you might either regret being a part of that audience or choose to make fun of them even if you never were a part of that audience but still it's kind of going to be sad that they're not getting served on that level in the same way that like all the hipster douches in college got their you know festivals that they could travel to some remote bumpfuck town on like the west (laughs) coast for or somewhere in texas or something or fire festival who knows (laughs) (laughs) oh man you know i'm just thinking about this now 2005 was 12 years ago. I, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, I'll, I will say, I never got to go to a warp tour. It was just it was never really my thing, you know, going to festivals with a bunch of people lumped in one another for hours on end. And, well, I, that 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 uh, time span and possibility just sort of flew by me. Alas. Alas. Um, outside of, you know, that, like, 
who's really going to be serving like this demographic on this scale. There is sort of the bad to mention. As a lot of people have pointed out in the aftermath, Warp Tour, especially given a lot of the recent uh, sexual assault allegations against literally fucking everyone, Warp Tour has always been, in its own way, sort of an incubator for this kind of thing. I still have very painfully vivid memories of when blood on the dance floor was culturally relevant. Oh, 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 douche chills. Ew. Yeah. Okay. I heard about that band. And it was like, oh, it was a, like, oh, damn. They are oh. the literal epitome of Roar XD and fuck Davy Fanity until he dies. Actually, don't fuck him. He's unfuckworthy. <laughs> and then, of oh. course, there were other controversies, perhaps most notably with that douchebag Ronnie Radke. Fuck that guy. Uh. Um, and, God, what was the other guy's name up? Front porch step. Some guy who again was accused of uh, fucking you know soliciting you know porn for minors and shit. So yeah, there is Ew. very much like a lot of cringy bullshit. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Lost Profits was once on uh, Warped Tour. Oh so. no, no 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 no! We do not talk about them. Never. We don't talk about that either. But you you see where I'm going here. There there are people who are very much celebrating that this would likely like you know put a dent in it. And while I want to be sympathetic to that cause, you do understand like. I'm I'm just going to say that the issues are not exclusive to Warp Tour. This is just a large, like, systemic thing where, like, Warp Tour is only, like, just... And the Hollywood shit is just one small facet of it. But, yeah, there's that. But I, I... I don't know. There's still a part of me that thinks, like, for all the jokes, for all the punchlines, and for all the ups and downs, the various permutations that the tour has gone through for a while, I think something is possibly going to... No, not possibly. There's definitely going to be something like a hole in the music industry with Warp Tour kind of gone in its this iteration, if it does come back in some form. Yeah, uh, I will say the difference in music from like 2005 to now could be a reason why it probably won't be the same because that era of pop punk and emo, it's just locked in the time capsule. You can't really replicate that the way bands like, you know, Blink-182, No Doubt, and My Chemical Romance, and uh, Fall Out Boy, how they rose to prominence from Warp Tour into the mainstream. You can't really replicate that same level of growth and... Uh, you know what I'm trying to say, right? I think so. I mean, though, to be fair, I think, like, My Chemical Romance, like, they... Um, like, they just happened to get really big, and then the Warped Tour shit kind of came in a yeah. little bit after. Yeah. So it was just kind of writing yeah. the success of that. What I'm trying to say is, I can't imagine a warp Tour with, like, all these fucking indie rock bands that are on the rise. Just, yeah. Oh, like Portugal the Man or something? Oh, God, no. Fucking, fuck him. Fuck them, wh- whoever he or they are. The music's terrible. But uh, oh, you be- oh, you better not let our buddy Ryan Panny hear that he liked their last album. <laughs> uh. But I mean, I think I kind of get it. Like, I mean, to be fair, it's not like they ever really tried to replicate the success of like the mid two thousands. They were always kind of like, I mean, they did move on to a point where they were very much courting, you know, more as I said, of mice and men, motionless and mm-hmm. white, pierce the veil. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I guess they, they, how they moved from like ska to pop punk to metalcore. I, I guess that, but where do you go from there with the current musical climate that we're in right now, in, in what is considered "quote unquote" on the rise? Well, I don't know. Like, I haven't been in a hot topic recently, so I couldn't really be the best answer for that. Mm. But I don't know. I, I just kind of feel like maybe it's kind of been jogging in place a bit, possibly. But I, I will admit, I'm kind of curious to see who would actually be in the um, in this final lineup. Um, from what I have heard, I think Kevin would be interested in getting uh, Quicksand because I think they were one of like the inaugural bands within like uh, the first lineup or so. And yeah, there would be a lot of interesting stuff. Like if they could kind of do like a full sort of generations run like i i think last year they had anti-flag on tour and that was a band that's sort of been like uh i think they said like 97 so if they could have stuff like that maybe they could get like i don't know they could find a way to hook in i don't know fallout boy or something when they're not busy you know writing bad pop rock songs uh, 
God. In fact, you know, th- this is kind of pie in the sky, but the most hype shit would be if they could somehow bring My Chemical Romance out of retirement for, like, this last tour. Not gonna happen, but a guy can dream, can he? Yeah. Provided they play nothing from Danger Days. <laughs> But yeah, um, this is kind of a still just a weirdly surreal thing. I've been sort of trying to process all week. I mean, yeah, that first time I went, that that was, actually was like a really fun weekend. Like all snark and jokes aside, like, but I I do see like the complaints of as far as like the toxic culture within it. But I, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of complicated shit going on in here right now. We'll just have to see what the actual um you know, how this final tour pans out. And interestingly enough, mm-hmm. the very final stop of it is the one closest to me in West Palm Beach. Hmm. Very interesting. But, um, yeah, that's basically all the discussion on that uh, last story. So now we just have to take care of one last thing, and that's the new album releases for November 24, 2017, of which there's barely any, at least barely any noteworthy. Uh, there's only four that the really uh, squeezed come to mind like okay so there's a uh, no cure for death the newest album from the sort of hardcore punk ish super group called sect i think the drummer from fallout boy is in this band yeah I, th- I know it's one of the members from fallout boy but um anyway uh there's also the latest release from the paul joseph watson of rap music aka hobson <laughs> with no shame <laughs> God. Uh, there's a Weird Al compilation coming out, uh, Squeezebox, the complete worst of Weird Al Yankovic, and of course, the big one for this week, uh, the latest album from Icelandic national treasure, Bjork, with Utopia. <laughs> it's also Record Store Day Black Friday, so if you're going out there, get a couple of good things. I won't, because nothing really interested me that much, but, uh, I'm sure there's something out there for everybody else. Yes, yes, there is. So, yeah, that'll about uh, do it for this week. So now we got to clean house and get the hell out of here. So, Alex, where can they find you on the internet? Same place as always, everywhere, or of Azure. Mostly on Twitter, sometimes on Instagram, and now on something that Fantano introduced me to, a place called Snups, where you just post pictures of all your random crap in your collections, like I'm doing with my vinyl collection. Hooray! Interesting. Mark, what about you? Yeah. As usual, on Twitter, at CuriousCat at mac 2 Media, and on my site, the minor Hyman one at the Hyman one at WordPress.com. I got two new edit reviews out this week. That's Beef with Chalubico and 91 Days, Purple Face Given. In other words, um, check your stuff in before you eat it. Yes, yes You'll you get should. It. As for me, you can find me on Twitter, CuriousCat, and Instagram at Rob Barracuda. Email me, robert at surrealresolution.com if you have questions, comments, concerns, and uh, very seasoned, aggressively seasoned memes. Not not like white people seasoning. No, no, no. Um, of course, uh, subscribe to the podcast on Google Play and iTunes. New audio-only episodes go up every Wednesday. Video usually goes up by Friday um, on the official YouTube channel of Surreal Resolution. Just search Decibel Boost Podcast or Surreal Resolution on YouTube. Subscribe and hit bell tap so you know when new episodes of the podcast go up. Follow us on Twitter, at Surreal Rezo. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitch, where we're streaming every day. And, of course, visit the website, www.surrealresolution.com. Um, and find the podcast on its own subdomain, decibelboost.surrealresolution.com, where you can listen to the archives of our past episodes, and of course check out our other podcasts as well. Gaming, Training Stage, Movies, Salty Flicks, Anime, Podcast ONA. Heck, there's a quickie news thing they have out now, and that'll only take up like 5 or 10 minutes of your time, so listen to it. Every week until January. Of course, be sure to keep up with all of our written content. I should have a review sometime this week of the new King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album, Polygon Duana Land. Um, that's basically all I had to say on that front. So, um, be sure to jump into our Discord chat, where we are always chatting about memes and chicken wings. And, of course, shout out to the producer, Mr. E, for graciously letting me use his music for this podcast. Links to his shit down in the description. That'll, of course, do it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, happy Thanksgiving, y'all!
thousands of years ago.